Uh, so I'm sta I have to stand within the red uh, circle. So as I was just uh, moving up, I was thinking that whenever we try to think creative, the society tends to tell us stay within a box. It's, it's a little different here because we have to stay within a circle here. But anyways, uh, moving on to uh, who I am. I am a person just like any of you uh, right here, but I have a story to share. This is me when I was a young child. And as you can see from the left picture, I used to read up a lot. I, I loved reading, I loved learning. And that used to range from psychology to uh, reading people's biographies to science. And it, within science, it would be engineering, physics, chemistry, biology, everything. I used to love reading about everything. And there used to be no boundaries. But that's me when it was a regular classroom. I used to be wandering around. I, I, I used to struggle with my studies when it came to uh, uh, school work. And my teachers used to tell me, Shams, you're, you look so intelligent. Why, why doesn't it reflect in your grades? And that's something that did bother me. That was how, how I used to struggle. And uh, if you look at that, I, I started uh, blaming it on the system. I started raising questions. Like, for example, this picture over there, uh, why shouldn't cheating be allowed? That was, that, that used to be my first question. Why shouldn't cheating be allowed? Because the real life is about collaboration. Real life is about working together. It's never so individual as individualistic, right? Uh, when you go out and do a job or, or you're, you're trying to uh, build something, a new product, you're always, you always need other people to come and help you. It's never you and then like, uh, like hide all you, all you know and then uh, you have to put that in, right? That was one of the things. And another thing related to the exams was you can always Google, right? So what was the point of really uh, memorizing all of this information and keeping it in your mind while you could just Google that out? So that was one of my other queries. I had a numerous number of queries. I used to read up on the seven deadly sins of the education system and all of that. And whenever I used to go and read, like when I was in my home, I had to read, right? Read my interesting things. I used to have having be trouble with homeworks. You have to finish your homework first and then go and read what you want to read. So that was another of my, why, why should it be that I'm interested in learning about this right now? Why do I have to do that before? So throughout this all struggle, uh, what, what later I, I started thinking about was, was this term cognitive dissonance. What it means is what I read is whenever you decide to do something, your actions seem to change your be, uh, beliefs, your way, the way you look at the world. So my friends used to tell me, maybe because you're f failing in regular school, that's why you're blaming it on the system. So maybe, maybe that's, that's the case. Maybe the system is perfect, it's fine. There's nothing faulty about it, but it's you. It's you who's just trying to bring in excuses that it's, it's not your fault, it's the system's fault. So I, I started looking up through the internet and figure out what others used to think, right? What others used to think. And I, uh, maybe I was not alone. So I kept on searching, kept on searching, and I found very interesting things. I found people who think alike. For example, uh, this picture was, uh, I, I, I found when I was young uh, through the internet. So this was, I didn't do that. So somebody s uh, put that up. So the picture tells the story, right? And uh, as you can see, Again, children want to think uh, imaginatively, but their teachers tend to, or, or the system, I wouldn't blame the teachers, the system tends to shape that into the way uh, the society works. And then I started reading up more intellectual, what, what intellectual people had to say, and, and Einstein was saying something that is very deep, that what interferes with his learning is his education. And uh, Tony Wagner, the famous uh, Harvard innovation professor, he said that the American education system is obsolete, not Bangladeshi education system. One of the best in the world is obsolete, it's outdated. So I started finding hope and faith that, okay, it's, maybe it's not just me, uh, it's, it's, it is the system, and people are struggling. When I used to go, to with, uh, go and talk to my friends when I was in university, I was in Brack University then, I used to find a lot of people who'd come in that round table discussion and would agree with me. Because I can see all of your face and I can see that all of you agree as well. There is something wrong with the system, right? So, so all of that used to stay within that discussion. Uh, I would be actually limited to thoughts and discussions. Because we would be very engaged that, yes, these are the problems, that is the problem, this is the problem, that is the problem, problem A, B, C, D, till Z, and, and then Z, uh, maybe A, Z, and all those formations, so many problems. But 
Nobody actually took any action about it. Nobody started doing something about it. So something happened in my life back then uh, that made me uh, change uh, my, my course of life. So, and, and one, of the, one of the leading things is uh, uh, my, my dad suggested me a book to read. And although it, 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 what it resulted wouldn't really uh, be something that my dad would be excited about, but, but, but I decided to incomplete my uh, degree in Brack University. So, yeah. So I, I decided to incomplete my degree and I decided to explore and see what I can do with my life, see what I can do with education and if I can set up a school. And with, with friends and with partners, I started uh, a few failed attempts, yes. I didn't know it would fail, but yeah, I did do that. So one of those, uh, one of those is, as you can see, these are uh, Brack street, uh, street children in front of Brack University. So we used to go and teach them uh, lots of different things, whatever they wanted to learn. There was no barrier, there was no uh, limitation, there was no box. So whatever they used to want to learn, we would teach them. But it was fail, it didn't really work out financially, the whole model didn't sustain, and then we moved on to upper middle class kids. And this time we said, we will teach you six different subjects, starting from psychology to computer science to, uh, what, uh, to uh, physics. And that also didn't work because the parents didn't understand what this would actually be for their uh, children. But, but finally, after six or seven months, I figured, uh, me along with my partners, figured out something that was a working model. As you can see, these are uh, children by the age of 10 and 11 who, are, who, used to, who started learning about Arduino boards and about processing, which is a programming language. So they started learning how to program, how to build circuits and electronic systems and all of that. And, and I uh, started applying all of those questions and problems I used to see with the regular system and apply those over here. So do it differently. And uh, one of those examples that you would see that I, that I was doing differently was my other question I had, why should classes be divided in ages? Why should we be segregated in ages? I think we all do really well when we collaborate with our elder brothers, elder sisters, and sometimes with our younger ones together, right? That's how, that's how the world works. So here you can see Lale, she's uh, 14, and she's working with uh, uh, Zizo and Samir, who are eight and nine. And they're working together, on, they're learning the same content, and there is no age, uh, age limitation. So, Trying out with all of those uh, different things for last uh, two and a half years, I have encountered miracles. These, these are miracles I've seen uh, in, my, in my life that these children have brought. And one of those miracles is uh, these two young children. They were nine, uh, Abrar was nine and Safon was 11 when they were speaking at last, year, last year's TEDx Dhaka. And I figured out, I did some research and I found out that they were the youngest TEDx speakers over the whole world. And <laughs> thank you. And I think that's something we should be proud about as a Bangladeshi. So, and they talked about their, uh, they talked about their uh, uh, exploration and, and adventure in the world of technology. But interestingly, that's not the only thing they learned, which you can understand from the video. I don't want to work for anyone, no offense, but I want to open my own business and I want to open my own business and I want to build robots and like machines and gadgets which will help people in their daily lives. I just want to change Bangladesh and I'm hoping I can change the world and I just don't want to go to school and then get a job and just die. <laughs> I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered in the future and I want to be known for what I built. So, so they did learn something more than just about technology, as, as you can witness. And, and I've seen miracles when uh, things that they have built, uh, uh, things that they have built have actually resulted uh, to be in Bengal Art La Bengal Foundation in one of those exhibitions of Mahbub Rahman where you would see the seven violins move by itself when people would go in front. And one of those other examples is what I hold right now is, is the little box, as we call it. This is one of the games that the children built. This is uh, a 3D printed box uh, that has the circuit they built inside it. And these were built by uh, our students. And uh, in one of the events that we organized, this is, a, this is actually a gadget, that a console that you use to play the software game. 
is one of the participants in, those, in that competition we arranged, actually decided that he's going to produce uh, 1,000 or 2,000 pieces in the market. So that's something that cre they created in the classroom, and you will see very soon in the market. One of, those, uh, uh, one of those other miracles that I saw is when I started exploring outside Dhaka. I went to the, one of the highest uh, hills of Bangladesh, which is Chimbuk. Uh, many of you have, tr have, have got a good trip there, I, I uh, am sure. And I found a Murong community over there. And it, among them, I, uh, we were teaching around 10 or 12 uh, Muro children who we couldn't communicate with Bangla or neither English. And the only way to communicate them with them would be the uh, way, uh, the language of technology. And uh, for the last one year, they have been doing amazing things. They know how to work with ultrasound sensor. They know how to collect data. They know how to build software, simple software for the last one year. So the other interesting thing is, this is, as you can see, this is me. And uh, this is Jolil. He used to go with me to uh, Bandarbon. To, we used to go together. And he learned while I was teaching the others. He used to be a teacher assistant. And from that, uh, he grew a lot of skills for which he's now a teacher at Dhaka's Aino Shalish Kendro Goran uh, DIC. So these are Goran uh, DIC drop-in center working children in Dhaka who are learning programming for free for the last uh, two months. And what's interesting is that uh, recently, we had a project with Leaping Boundaries. I think you have already heard of Leaping Boundaries today. Uh, so uh, we, we have a project with Leaping Boundaries, and uh, what, fi what we figured out is that the, the girls that are learning over here, who are students of Jolil, uh, are actually capable to go and teach the madrasa girls themselves. <laughs> so that's a whole, a whole chain of teachers, as you can see, new possible teachers coming out. Another very interesting uh, miracle, I mean, not interesting miracle, they're miracles, and that's what, I re that, what, that's what keeps me pushing and doing what I'm doing, is the women in tech. Uh, these are Fortichuri rural girls who are learning how to code on Arduino boards and who are developing softwares using processing. These are all Ainushalish Kendro uh, girls. And you've also seen one of the girls uh, in, in the previous picture, Lale who's been learning for the last six months, and they're doing amazing. What's more interesting is recently five more girls joined, and they're from different backgrounds, ranging from graphics design to architecture, to one of them is, a, is actually a Brack University economics lecturer. All these ladies are actually learning how to code and build circuits, and to be, to, so that they can for, uh, move forward and teach. And, and that's, that's what I call women in tech, that women who are actually, who knows how to code and who, know, who knows how to build circuits. So that's one of the other miracles that uh, I've witnessed. This, this picture right here is, is, is Samir talking, uh, saying what is, uh, why is this wrong? So that, that's, that's actually how uh, the homework is done because as I said, homework used to be one of my problems. So I, I, I made it a bit different this time. So I wouldn't tell them to do anything, but I would create that environment that they would want to do things from home. So they would email me. This is one of those emails that I receive every two day or one day from my students. And this is a whole code they wrote. And he doesn't know what's wrong with that. So he wants me to solve that. And he's eight years old. One of the questions I face sometimes, uh, as you have heard, there are, there's the free version. There, there's uh, 25 kids in Dhaka who are learning uh, by paying. Uh, but there are the free versions in Bandarbon, Fortik Churi, and Ainu Shalish Kendra. In total, there are 45 children and 15 uh, more to add. But what about the 25 children? They belong to very extremely upper middle class uh, area. People tend to question me, how is it a social cause? I had the same question I heard from the American centers, directors, that uh, we, we don't uh, support a cause that, that is not social. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's you're serving the upper middle class. How is, how is it a social cause? And the only thing, uh, the only way I answer is by the next picture. As you know, picture, a picture can tell a thousand words. I think I don't need to go and explain wh uh, what I mean, right? Now, the way I would like to end this is when I was a child, I used to struggle. There used to be no adult who would come to me and tell, tell me that this, the way you're thinking is correct. You need to move on. You need to start dreaming. You need to start building things. You need to start. And I, I, did, I wasn't introduced to Arduino boards. I wasn't introduced to processing back then. I got my first computer when I was in 11th grade. And uh, my teachers, my friends would tell me that it's, you, it's your problem, not the system's problem. 
And I think the children that are learning from the Tech Academy are extremely privileged to have found all of these uh, uh, life events that will change them. And I want, I want to wonder that what these children would actually grow up to do. That is my curiosity. That, that is what my curious mind tells. That when you uh, educate your children the proper way, when you uh, bring in the proper elements, what do they create? What do they create when they grow up? And that's something I don't know. That's something I think we all should wonder. And one of the ways I would want, uh, want to end with the good news is that, did we imagine four years back that this is where the Bangladesh team would be? <laughs> that, thank you. Did we imagine that they would be actually defeating India uh, Pakistan, they would be whitewashing Pakistan and then India and then South Africa and then when Australia team didn't come we would make jokes around that they are afraid. <laughs> I think it's time we can start thinking that four years from now we are, uh, the, the Bangladesh, the country that's a hundred years behind in the, in, in, in the terms of technology and, and innovation, why not these kids and other children, if we train them properly, if we educate them properly, can uh, create infinite ideas themselves. Thank you.